Good day. <clears throat> this is the Elliott Wave weekly update for the NASDAQ 100 being recorded on Saturday, August the 24th, 2024. I'm going to start with the NDX and I'm going to start on the daily. Now, in the NDX, I am running, if, if you remember now, I'm running both a preferred and an alternate interchangeably. They have equal weight in terms of which one may or may not be in force at the moment. And since we've not really reached levels that are going to disqualify one and put all the weight on the other, yet I need to just continue to present both. So in the NDX, in the cash market, I am going on what I'm now considering the alternate. And that would be that we are still working through the minor fourth wave correction. And what we're reaching up towards is the high for uh, minute wave B of minor wave four. And that would suggest that we have an additional C wave, a stronger decline to begin now. Now, this is where it starts to get sticky because we would start that now and it would drop back to the lows that we saw back in at the beginning of August. And that would be at 17,435 basis to cash. So I'd be looking for that to move below that level since it didn't go above the high. So we come back down and likely get to that low point, which again was from last April at 16,974. Now that would be perfect for a wave four correction coming into, again, the box that I still leave there for that wave four. Now, as I will present and show in the futures market, that would be the preferred count, which suggests that minor wave four did end here. It, and the time factor kind of went to the wayside and the market just completed that fourth wave quicker because it meets a lot of the objectives for how what would qualify it to be complete. And that being that it got into this box, got towards the low end of the box, and <clears throat> which is towards the terminus, the end point for the minute wave four. And so the minor wave four, we would always look for to find its terminus, its end point within the price territory of the fourth wave of one less degree. Minor one less degree is minute. So it fits. And then on a time factor, the minute wave four and the minor wave four pretty much came in at the same amount of time it took to get from the high down to back to the low of that move. So I'm allowing it on that factor. If we go out and we start using Fibonacci uh, fractals, time fractals, then we would be expecting it to bottom towards the end of August into September. And that puts a little bit more time within to complete it. And that's why we're continuing to run an alternate. So leaving it here in the alternate, I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to take a look at how this is all moving out <clears throat> in terms of what could be left in this B wave to do. So I actually, you can see here, I've got this marked A, B, C down for my new wave A. And then I have Minuet wave A, minuet wave B of the minute B wave. And then we're doing one, two, three. I've marked the three here. I will put the four. Oh, I forgot to do it. Let me do that right now. I'm going to put the four all the way down at that low, uh, which still, you know, even under the preferred count, does suggest that we may, we could have one additional drop down, but I'm going to mark it as complete. And the reason is, is because the market got all excited after Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole speech, and that might just carry us through. Now, if this is wave four, then what can we expect from a wave five? Well, we have 618 at 19,963. Definitely moves it up to a new high because the previous high is, come on, right there, is at 19,939, I'm going to call it. And this would put us in a new high, not by much, but if we get five waves, which we could, then that would be one stop. The next stop would be where wave five 
the small wave five is equal to that small wave one, and that comes in at 20,275, I'm gonna call it. So that would be 100%. Then we have the C wave would be 2.618 of the A wave, and that's at 20,512. All still below that high that's being marked for um, minor wave three, and that comes in at 20,672. Now, yep, I hear you calling that this is a zigzag. And I do understand that rule and that guideline, depending on how you want to look at it, where if the market puts in a zigzag corrective phase for a wave A, then we would not be looking for it to come back up in more of a flat structure. So in other words, the low of A and the high of the start of A is the, the starting point for wave B and the ending point for wave B, they should kind of be equal. So we'd be expecting the B wave to come up this high. But being that it was a zigzag, one, two, three, four, five, ABC, one, two, three, four, five, then it becomes a zigzag. Now, as I've said all along, we're seeing a lot of changes occur in how we label and what Elliot really has to say because of the changes in how things are trading, what's creating those changes. They're not necessarily really based on human emotional reactions. They're based on capital flow, options flow, gamma flows. They're based a lot of it on the flows. This particular move that we saw on Friday was an expiration, but also the Jackson Hole speech. So together, they produced the stronger upside, where we saw the Dow go up over 400 points. We saw the NDX go up over 200 points on Friday. Now, that's just, an, a, I think, a reaction to what we saw, that very strong down day on Thursday. So again, you know, markets start sending out these confusing messages, but now we want to interpret it and then we listen to the narrative. It's like, oh yeah, Fed's going to cut. He's now all lined up. Everyone's now calling Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole speech is dovish versus hawkish and just et cetera, et cetera. So the market's going to jump on board going like, yeah, interest rate cuts are great, they're great, they're great. Let's understand, even if they cut it to a quarter, that puts the target the interest rate target on, on the short-term rate at five to five and a quarter instead of five and a quarter, five and a half. Yes, it's a rate cut, but I think the reaction could be way beyond reality in terms of how much is that going to contribute to a longer-term interest rate picture? Because what has to happen next is a continuation, a they cut at the September, they cut at the October, they cut at the December meetings. So that, that we just have these successive cuts that are going to equal that we get a decent size rate drop. Quarter of a point. Mm. Yes, it's a beginning. Yes, it should help. Yes, we're already starting to see mortgages starting to come down in advance of I'm starting to see a lot of uh, companies that just give, produce loans. They're starting to lower those rates, but that's because those rates were sky high. So they begin to lower them because the money to, to, to lend will become cheaper to obtain, right? That's the function of the Fed. So we start to see them, but how much they'll really start to drop is going to be very, very important to this picture. So I think that the reaction, it's long in the tooth. We've been waiting since March for this cut because, oh, we were going to get the cuts and they were going to start in March. They didn't do anything in March. They didn't do anything in April. They didn't do anything in May. They didn't do anything in June. They didn't do anything in July, et cetera. And in August, they also left it unchanged. So here we are, six months later. Are they ready? Well, before the Fed meeting, we're going to have employment levels. We're going to have PPI and CPI all within those first two weeks. And then the, I believe that the next Fed meeting is September the 16th or right around that date. It'll be on a Wednesday when we get all those the information. 
So I keep both sides alive right now because technically it hasn't really broken above the high. That would be in my view. And I know we've talked about the 0.618 level, which has been exceeded, but we got the 786 stirrings in the face and that sits at 19,994. Which if it reaches that and turns south and with some power, like we saw, you know, Thursday, I, I, I wasn't, and we may still, let me just say, I was expecting follow through to the downside. And initially, you know, we did kind of come back down and, you know, we didn't quite make it all the way to a new low, but I thought, okay, well, that's the reaction I thought I would get, that we get, you know, this one, two, and then we would drop down to finish this fourth wave. And I had levels down, down between 19,200 and 100. They could bring it all the way down. And in fact, I could just kind of draw the, put them in right now, and we can see what they would look like uh, or, or what I actually had at this. Nope, I don't need that one. Sorry about that. I want to go do a different one. I want to do this. Nah, not from there. So we're going to go from here down to here, up to here. So you see, I had 19,339, 19,043. 100%, you know, so in other words, if this was a C, C equals A, 19,340. And that, again, 200 points from where we are, or, or from where that low is. From where we are, it's 400 points. So could it do it? Yeah, it could. It definitely could. And then put in a cleaner floor. But in the meantime, how do we want to react or how should we come in with this strength in this rally? So, well, you got to look for it to continue. One, two, and we're in a three going up. And it's and, and it would be a sub-minuet wave five. But even if I'm going over and, and even under the uh, preferred count right now, which is suggesting that Minor wave four is complete. This is one, two, finishing the three. That would be the four. And we're still rising in a fifth wave, but it is a um, minute fifth wave. Or we we haven't finished minute wave three yet. So in other words, it could be all internal, right? That this is minute one, minute wave two. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, minute wave three. I, I have on my other chart labeled this as minute wave three. So if I had to change that, then minute wave three here, this would be four, and we're in a minute wave five. And all of these levels still exist, but we'd be expecting it to go to a new high above the 20,069. That would be one level. And the next one, I didn't put them up because of, of the size. But we we would be back above twenty one thousand, essentially, by before all is said and done, and I could add one more level because wave five could certainly kind of cruise itself up there, and be totally within a realm of reality. Twenty one five ninety two. If they're really going to get excited, whoo hoo! We're going to get those lower rates. Whoo hoo! You better buy everything now. That could be the disappointment. You know, you get a lot of different style of trading coming in, and so it all can happen. But those would be the levels. But right now, under this alternate view that we'd be looking for a fifth wave up, we have 19,963, 19,994, where it comes in 786. And again, one, two, three, four, five, maybe. Those are still going to be strong rallies. It's 200 points up to 250 points up to the 0 0.618. 270 points up to the 994. So we still, we can get a three and a four and a five, and we still end up here still below that low. Finish it, put a B on it, and then we tumble. It could. I'm just presenting possibilities. I by no means of saying 
This is exactly what's going to happen. Please understand, technical analysis is a guide. So these are levels that the market could reach. And under this particular count, if we called it a B wave, then we'd expect it to really turn and to drop very quickly. You can look at whatever you want to look at as to what may cause that. I don't go out and, and pretend to understand it's like the market reacts in this manner. Because quite frankly, even with a cut in interest rates does not, does not suggest that we just pick up and we start running higher and don't stop. We cannot discount the fact that we might still be moving into a period of deflation, aka recession. Can happen. Periods of strong inflation, which we saw stubbornly stay high, causing the Fed to hold those rates higher because they wanted to succeed and, and say victory has been met. We've got inflation down to 2%. I think it's actually a political game, to be honest with you, and I know I'm stepping out of my bounds here, but when we really look at it, Inflation still is very real, still is very stubborn to all of us that actually go to the store and buy food and go and fill our tanks full of gas and go and pay for the utilities, the gas and electric and the water. Those are still higher and don't have any signs of being cut lower. So we're still being gouged in certain areas, but conveniently the Fed in their, which they've been doing for years and years, when they report CPI, it's excluding food and energy because they're too fluctual, whatever they want to call it. But lately, those prices have not come down. So to say that they've met their target is nothing more than just a political statement in my mind. Oh, yeah, see, we did it. We did it. And we're at 2%. So now we'll cut rates even more and hope that everything else falls into line. But what could happen? If it doesn't, we get a negative number, right? Something will happen, we get a negative number. What's that do? Shuts the whole thing down. So again, the way people want to interpret, it's just like you're jumping in front of a moving, you know, I don't know, a falling knife, a moving train, whatever you want to call it. And so I prefer to kind of just wait and see what actually happens. And I'm going to trade it the way the markets wants to do it. The market wants to go up. It's like, fine. If you want to take it up all the way to 22,000, well, fine. I can trade that. Now, again, I'm going back to a conversation about how do you trade? What do you want to position in? How do you want to do it? A lot of people are getting chewed alive with position trading because the market is bouncing all over the place, forcing those traders whether you're doing it personally for your own 401k, your own retirement account, or, or you're doing it professionally in a larger uh, setting in terms of like you're, you're managing a lot more money, a lot of adjusting is happening. And it's not so necessarily coming in because the Fed doesn't cut. It's really coming back in and remaining because of the flows. I keep talking about them because it truly, in my mind, folks, it truly is what is controlling our moves. And that's called risk on, risk off. It's either the risk on trade or it's a got to take it off and it's the risk off trade. And it's a matter of really determining are we in a positive gamma atmosphere or are we in a negative gamma atmosphere? Negative gamma atmosphere drives us to produce gaps, big gaps all the way. And this is risk on. And then we get the gaps going in the other direction. We get a gap. They're just buying. They're just buying. And we might get a gap tomorrow. Because we, we opened to, I mean, to, to Monday in the cash market. Tomorrow in the futures market. So again, right now, holding the alternate <clears throat> would suggest that we're going to go up to a five, put a B of it, and we're going to turn and go lower. In lieu of that not happening, a break to new highs. So we end up up breaking above 20,660. Actually, 672. So 20,778 would definitely do that trick. It nullifies this, puts the four down there, and runs this as five waves. One, two, 
three, four, and then we're in the five. Now, five could be pretty explosive. Three's, three was good size. This is one, two, and that's all three. It's pretty good size. But, you know, we're going to wait and see. We're going to wait and see. Both sides still very much alive. All right, let's go over and take a look. Now, first, moving average-wise, let me just take a peek at the moving averages. Let's go out to the daily. That's what I want. When we go here, we're looking at it. You can see, finally, finally, the 20 has popped above the 50 on the daily, putting us back in alignment, not super strong, but in alignment to continue to move higher. But see that? That stayed negative for a while. And that's what kind of kept capping this. I kept this, this alternate in view. Now, this all gets itself nicely lined up and we get a nice turn higher. Look at market strength not truly being reflected as I would imagine on the daily in our moving averages. This should be more moving higher, a little bit more strength, higher with a little bit more strength. The daily RSI still got plenty of room, but look, it just basically turned higher there and not with any great power. So we'll see. All right, let's go over and take a look at the NASDAQ, at the futures market. Now here, there is minor three, minor four came down, and it did get a little bit below the low of minute wave four to a T perfect. Timing, those are still equal. Is it acceptable? I'm going to say yes, but is that something that we would normally look at? Not really. Then you'd go to those Fibonacci time fractals and you'd be looking at those when you're like, hmm. But in terms of time, these two are equal. So again, that's why I'm like, and then what do we got going on? A fairly strong up move. I'm going to do this. Fairly strong. They got one, two, and that that's a little bit weird. But still, one, two, and off to the races in the three. Now, puts us in that same position. So I'm going to come down to that four hour, right? So we still have this. I'm leaving that four down there. That means we're in a minute five wave rally to finish minor wave five, and then in turn, intermediate wave three. Again, going back out to our longer term picture. What we have, we're in a primary fifth wave moving up. And within that primary fifth wave, it's going to consist of five waves of intermediate degree. That's the begin. And we're still in intermediate wave three. Now, within that, we got five waves of minor degree. One, two, three, four. So put us in minor wave five. What would the expectations be? Well, let's take a peek. I think I took it off because the, the numbers are up to be so high. Like you're talking 7.618 to get up there. So I rely more on the movements up here. So let's drop out of that. Let's drop down to the daily again. And now let's open this. We have wave three, wave four, one, and now we're counting minute degree again, right? Because it's a minor fifth wave, five waves of minute degree, one, two, three. I do feel that we've kind of gotten there, right? So what's going to be inside minute wave three, five waves of minuet degree, one, two, three, four, five. And that five ended with a diagonal. The fifth, the sub minuet wave five ended up being a diagonal to finish the minuet wave five and then in turn the minute wave three. So what do we got going on? Well, we have the beginning. Now, could that be all of minute wave four? Yeah, it could happen real quick but it certainly covered all the territory. And let's just double check, right? If we're looking, we gotta take it off of that low and we go like this and we're gonna add, oop, come on. And we're gonna add this. Now, so where are we? 3A2, didn't even come close. Didn't even hit 2.236. So that's why I keep alive. Let me just reset these a little bit. 
right on my new wave four, so I don't need that one, that one. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it on because it hasn't even reached it yet. I'm just gonna set my colors correctly so we can see. And 618, those I wouldn't be looking for. And let's go like that. So here we have them. So that's what I was talking about before. It's like if we would come down, that was the area and it did come down inside the uh, fourth wave of one lesser degree, minute down to minuet. It did do that, which is why I thought, okay, could, could be done. But Fibonacci wise didn't come close. We still have that possibility. So what could we be looking at here? Bring it down to the four hour chart, open it up again. And we have it, it's, I know it's kind of cloudy in there, but let's try to, try to take a look from here. So there we have a little bit cleaner. There's our four, one, two, three, looking for this four here. Well, here is, okay, let me, I can change this to get it out of the way over there and bring it over here. So we got a little bit more room to see what we're actually doing. This could be wave A of four. This could be wave B of four. And now we're in a C wave. And guess what? One, two. Now, what would that suggest? That would suggest tomorrow, or actually Monday, but starting tomorrow, we don't fly higher. Now, what's going to what's going to change that? If we gap up tomorrow and end up above 19,904, or just gap up and then a Monday gap up a little further and we break 19,904, then this is going to be four and this is going to be one, two, and we're off to the races in the third. Now, remember, this whole count is suggesting we're in a minor fifth wave up to, again, complete that intermediate third wave. So what are we confronting once we get up there, right? You get all this hoopla about, wow, 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 we're going to get lower interest rates. We get lower interest rates. Let's run, run, run. Let's buy, buy, buy. And then suddenly it gets up there. It's like, okay, so you get your quarter point cut. It starts. Well, what now? We come flipping back down in an intermediate fourth wave. And guess where that intermediate fourth wave is likely to get to? Back, not this four. Yeah, I, yes, this four. Sorry, back down towards the low of the minor four. Intermediate four finds its terminus in the price territory of the fourth wave of one lesser degree. Boom, right there. So again, we run up, new all-time highs, once again, and then we drop all the way back. So... But let's take a look at what we can think we might get to see come Monday. So if we hold below 19,904 and we just kind of fuddle around, then we're still alive in the fact that we might have an A, B, and we come down in the C wave, which could project to 19,416. And on the 4-hour chart, it just happens to be right between the 4-hour 50 and the 4-hour 200. In fact, it would just sit right above the 4-hour 200 period moving average. Very likely. And that moving average is starting to move sideways. So it's going to provide support. And that could complete the ABC, put a four under it, and then we launch once again. Now, a break above 19,904 is going to put the weight on the fact that it's done. The four is done here. And I added a fib to suggest just that. And that would be that this is minor, uh, excuse me, minute wave four, and we're heading higher. And a minute wave five. What does that suggest? Well, we got 618 at 20,281. I don't believe that that would contain it. But then where wave five would be equal to wave one, the most common is 20,738. But guess what? Let's take it out one more and take a look at what we need to get above. We have a high at 20,984. So the 100% is 20,738. Now, wait a minute. Not high enough. So we got to, let's take it back down to the hourly, right? We're taking a look at that. Not enough. Not enough. But minor wave five comes in at 20,907. Is that enough? Let's double check. All right? So we're going to go back out to that four hour chart. What's this high? 20,983. No, not high enough. So what do we need to really launch here? Right? What needs to really kind of come in? 
that means the that the fifth wave needs to get like up towards here. And then what do we got above all this? Ah, oh, there we have it. Where we can, can collectively get uh, to a range where both this fifth wave and this fifth wave can complete. And that's sitting way up here. Here, you got one and not the other. So could it complete? No, because we're not really, it could, but then it's going to show up as a fifth wave failure because it's not creating a new high. We need to get above 21,000. So that's where this one comes in. This would meet, mm, if we got five, it would meet. If not, then we, this could complete it. So this is our first, not that 20,738. This is our first target zone, but basically above 21,000. So this becomes a little bit stronger. That's the minute five. And then the minor five would just follow in because we would have five waves up, right? A minute degree. So that could work. But if we exceed all that, our next grouping for the minor is 23,098. And the minute, 22,673. Now, is it possible that we could go jumping up from where we are? <clears throat> That's 900 points. Yeah, it, it does exist. It does exist. Don't forget that we still, on the 28th, next week, we have NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been known, right? If you've been following the NASDAQ for a while and you actually trade NVIDIA, well, that's a stock that can just really come out and blow the doors off of earnings and say, we are the best, we are the, the savior of the world, and blah, blah. We're up 100 points in NVIDIA, and that will pull up the balance of the artificial intelligence MAG-7. And that, my friends, we start to see. What did they kind of come into? We got Apple up two and three, two, two and a third on Friday. We have AMAT up two and a half. We had AMD up over three points. We had, we had Broadcom. These are all stocks that are involved with chips or you know, artificial intelligence. So again, um, those stocks will come into play again off of NVIDIA's earnings. So a lot to be said, but to the upside, these are not unrealistic. But I would be anticipating a major turn lower because if we get up this high, that very appropriate to complete an intermediate degree third. And again, I just want to show you, let's take it all the way out to here. Is that such a stretch? No, it really isn't when you look at it. It's just when we drop back down, take it off the weekly, we bring it down to a daily or even the hourly. It's like, wow, that's so far up. But in terms of what could the rally could do, and we've seen it before. And again, remember, it's like when we start moving up and we're getting into never been in this area before, you want to talk thin, we will run out of sellers. And the only, and what will force it and even give it, you know, because you have gaps between, well, I'm not going to sell it there. I'm not going to sell it there. So you have to have a specific reason if you're hedging against something for selling at a particular level. So again, that's, just going to depend on what's happening and what the flows are showing us. If the capital flows are in, if the risk on trade is in full swing, they will be selling the VIX and taking that money and buying the underlying volatility, i.e. the MAG-7, other auxiliary companies that are within that realm of artificial intelligence. That's the one they got to go for. That's the one they believe in chip makers, users of, producers, you know, everything that's related to artificial intelligence will catch fire. And again, if they're buying calls and selling puts, the dealer, the dealer will provide the upside because the dealer will be racing to capture the stock. They'll be wanting to cover there. And if it's in an index, they will be running to cover and hedge those shorts by buying, okay? So it, it could go real 
easy, real quick. So, and again, don't forget that we're not going to start to add in. We, we, we really haven't seen macro traders in a while. It's all been a lot about, you know, the, the, the technical side. So if we're going to go look and we've got the macro trader stepping in because, hey, something to do now, lower rates, you know, run out. Let's go put some positions on to reflect that. And it could happen. So we got asset managers. We got a lot of people could come in and do that. That could propel the market. And again, we get up into new high territory. You could get that thinness, or it's not going to take much to get this thing to move. Particularly if they're really if they're jumping and pushing Apple above above two forty. You know, some of these stocks, when they start getting up there, what's it going to do to the index? It will be forced higher because the algorithms and, and the algos will buy it. But the seller is going to have to have a reason. And if you're just really just a day trader and your algorithm is just tra trading under agreement with the exchange to make a market on both sides, boy, you're going to see, well, they'll change positions. They can only short so much and then just going to go, okay, we're going to buy it because we know we got to, we got to sell it to somebody else. So a lot of stuff could be going on. A lot of stuff can happen. All right, let me bring this down to the daily. Let's take a look. So in essence, under the preferred count, we have the ability or we have the possibility, let me just go one more time down here, where we could have an A, B, one, two, three, four, five, C. And then we put a four down here, right? There's the three. We put a four down here and we start to charge again to new all-time highs. Or we break 19,904, which suggests that that fourth wave ended here at 19,591. And then we're off to the races now. So in other words, we, we come in tomorrow and you check in the markets once Globex starts to open and we're gapping. We're gapping and moving up. Could happen. We'll see. So a break there suggests the four is done and we're moving up in the five. And then I put those fibs here and that's the color. So you just follow those fibs on the way up. All right. So let me go back out to the daily. Let's take a look at our moving averages. See, this is the sick one, right? This is the future. That 20 is just barely above, barely above. That suggests that the fourth wave isn't done and we're going to come back down. And that's going to flatten that 20 and flatten that 250 and flatten that 200 even more. So again, against this, the moving averages have not been real strong in supporting the effort. It just throws caution to me constantly. We could just as easily turn and go kablooey. And that would then take us over to what we consider the alternate view. And we come all the way back down to here. We just don't know. Let's follow the market on that. All right, so we, but we have both sides. We're working both sides. We got fibs come in. So let's go day by day. That's the best I can do for right now. We're just going to take it day by day and keep the focus on trading. All right. So that's going to be it for today. The next Elliott Wave Daily, of course, will be on Monday, August the 26th.